You're listening to Staying in the Game, a Plum Dragon Herbs podcast where we have conversations about mindset and techniques for staying at the top of your game. I'm your host, Janelle Leatherwood. Well, welcome to our show today. We're so excited to have Nicole Maracle here with us today. And she Thank is you. an incredible OCR uh, competitor. And we're going to find out all about the types of competitions that she's had this past year and the races that she's been. She's we, we were lucky to grab her in the off season. Right now, she um, her first big race is in five weeks in Jacksonville. And last year's major accomplishments were second, you, placing second in the U.S. Spartan Series, second in the Spartan North American Champs, first in the OCR North American Champs 15K, second in the OCR North American Champs 3K, and first place in the Spartan World Championships, and then finally first in the Spartan Trifecta World Championships. Mm-hmm. Does that about cover it? <laughs> yep, sounds That's about just right. For the past year. We're going to um, post some of your other accomplishments on our blog that we'll have to go with the show notes and stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, but I was really excited. I know a lot of people um, have been asking you, how come you didn't go for that million dollar Spartan <laughs> award? And you have a great explanation. Do you want to let people understand yeah. how that works? Yeah. So, um, so in order to race at the 24 hour Spartan world championship, um, every competitor had to qualify by doing a Spartan ultra race. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't have any plans to race an ultra in 2019. Um, and a lot of people questioned after I won the world championship, they thought, well, why wouldn't you just add one in in order to, to qualify for Sweden for the ultra mm-hmm. championships? And it just, it was never in my plan. It's not something that at this point in my life, um, I'm really like passionate about doing mm-hmm. I, I I really enjoy short races, um, yeah. and, I'll, and I'll race up to up to like a half marathon distance, mm-hmm. or um, or even a little bit longer. But it just kind of not where my heart and my passion is. Yeah. So, yeah, the million dollar challenge. Yeah. I mean, I was like in some ways the closest to it, but it was still a far fetched, uh, <laughs> I don't know, goal. And um, and yeah, when it comes down to it, really wasn't what I wanted to do. So yeah. I was happy to go out there and cheer on my boyfriend and my friends mm-hmm. and. My, my friend Rhea had this amazing performance where she ran, um, like, what was it? The total amount, I think, was 70 miles for her, okay. um, which is an insane amount of obstacles and um, an elevation change because it's, it's a five-mile loop. Every, um, every time you go around, it's, like, oh, so wow. many thousand feet of elevation gain. And yeah. <laughs> so I'm very impressed by it, but it's just not something that – that I wanted to do this year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, training for an all day event versus, you know, the shorter events, it's a world of difference, you know? So it's kind of interesting that they have, that they combine all those competitions for this grand (laughs) prize, you know, are you, do you think you'll go for it this year or? I don't think so. No. Um, I, I do have plans to try out my first 50 K just in like a, a normal trail race. So no yeah. obstacles, but that's kind of the, the closest that I would get to pushing into the ultra scene. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, um, so what were some of the craziest things that you encountered on your races this year? I mean, you went in Tahoe, in the snow, the freezing cold, your hands were probably numb. What, what were some of the craziest things that happened to you this past yeah. season? Yeah. Um, I would say the the craziest race, the most memorable one, is definitely Tahoe. It was insane conditions. I was I was so nervous. I've never been that nervous before a race before, just because um, I my body doesn't actually, compared to a lot of other people, it doesn't really perform well in the cold. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean that's something that I kind of learned from college racing cross country in November. Yeah. Um, I just kind of never really seemed to to warm up like my teammates did. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then even like this year, I, I raced some earlier season races where the monkey bars were like a little frosty and, um, and I would slip off them, which was typically an obstacle that is super easy and kind of like a, a gimme. And so, um, so I, I had some, some real serious nerves going into Tahoe and I mm-hmm. think it made me like go through every single possible, um, possible thing that could go wrong. Uh, it made me double, triple check 
my gear and make sure that I was like the most prepared physically and gear wise that I could be. Um, and I think that, you know, it turned out well, but I really had to go through some like challenging mental times, even yeah. in, like, the few weeks leading up to the race. Wow. Yes. That's crazy. So did your hands freeze up when you were in the race? Um, you know, I had, I had a pretty good amount of, uh, of layers on, I would say. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I had some, some like Merino wool tights that were windproof and I had a, like a good base layer mm -hmm. and a, like a raincoat, like full on waterproof raincoat on top. And then I had these, these mittens that they're, uh, they're neoprene. So when they get wet, they're still warm and you can take them off and on really easily. So oh, you don't actually good. have to like fully remove them to do mm -hmm. obstacles. You can just kind of like pull them down. Your hands are exposed. You can move through an obstacle and then you can put them right back on. Mm -hmm. So um, with all of that, I mean, there are definitely challenging times in the race, <laughs> but there is never a moment where I, where my hands like completely froze up and I wasn't able to, to have like the dexterity that I needed. Yeah. Um, which, which did happen to some of the a lot contestants. Of people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think, and that was a mixture of, you know, some people didn't have, like, the best gear, and then mm -hmm. some people failed obstacles in which you then got got wet, potentially, more, mm -hmm. more wet than you would have otherwise, um, yeah. or had to do, one, one of the obstacles in particular called Ape Hanger, some people fell into um, at a deeper point in the obstacle, which meant they, they even, like, potentially completely submerged themselves, wow. and so... Then they got out of that after failing that obstacle and had to mm -hmm. do a penalty loop, which was a barbed wire crawl through snow. Oh, and so then you're just, you're not moving very fast and you're, mm -hmm. you're just kind of like getting colder as you're doing this penalty loop. So, mm -hmm. so that was like, I was, that was pretty critical to avoid. And that yeah. was one thing that I went into that obstacle. I've, I mean, I'm kind of known for, for having uh, one of the best grip strengths of, mm -hmm. of my competitors. And so it's, it's definitely advantageous to not fail things, yeah. um, especially when it means like it's not just like 20, 30 burpees. It's, you know, you're going to get more wet than you would otherwise. And you're going to have to do mm -hmm. this like crawling snow filled penalty loop. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. So I think some uh, there's some reasons that that my hands were were saved a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then also I had this really funny strategy for the the, the swim where you had to you had to like fully go into this, this pond at the top essentially. Um, and you had to swim around and it was a very short swim. It was only maybe like two minutes long mm -hmm. that you're in the water, but it's just the fact that you're getting completely wet oh, and then having God. to run down the mountain where again, like you're, you're not going to heat up that much running mm -hmm. downhill mm -hmm. as, or at least as compared to if you were going to run uphill. So, um, so what I did was, and, and some other people did this as well, but I had a dry bag with me and I actually took off anything that I could possibly take off. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I was, I was down to just my pants and my sports bra and everything else, mm -hmm. like gloves, um, you know, top layers, um, like my, my like running belt that I had. And, and I think I was wearing like a, like a little hat or something too. All yeah. of that went into my dry bag and then I swam with it. And then I spent the next like 10 minutes, like shivering, but trying to put my layers on. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, that was probably the most miserable part of the race because it was very cold getting out of that water into uh -huh. the exposed air and having no clothes on. <laughs> oh my God. But, yeah. but at least I was putting like dry layers on and I knew that there wasn't any really grip intensive obstacles mm -hmm. in the next, like, I think it was, I think we had like a mile and a half or two miles at least until we really had to use our hands. Mm -hmm. So I was afforded enough time to warm up well. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, and I was watching a lot of that race. Um, I loved how they recorded it. And um, I was you were way ahead of people, I mean, especially at the end. <laughs> Did you know that you were that far ahead? I had no idea. Okay. Yeah. Like, nobody offered me any information. And wow. I, I think, like, the rabbit who was filming me and running with me, um, like, like, he didn't know. And... Um, and just kind of like how I, how I was positioned in the race, like the, the viewers couldn't tell either. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I didn't actually know until like the very end, maybe like the last like gauntlet back in the village mm -hmm. that I had a, a sizable lead and I could like kind of like relax a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's funny cause like, yeah, like most of the time I was running, mm -hmm. running kind of not scared, but just like 
expecting to have to like 100% push mm-hmm. and, and expecting that like anybody could come around the corner at any second. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, well, I guess maybe in a way it's better not to know because that kept pushing you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it was good. I was able to, to race to my potential. Yeah. Uh, and I know a lot of the other women had a really hard day out there mm. and people people had like higher failure rates and were hypothermic and oh. um, had some like injuries that a little somewhat atypical. So, yeah, yeah it, was, how, it was a hard day. <laughs> yeah. How was um, Greece in comparison? Was it, I am guess, a lot warmer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Greece was lovely. It was it was sports bra and shorts weather uh-huh. <laughs> um, oh, for yeah. all three races. It was, it's fun to be in Sparta. It has like, you know, the, the history and, um, the town is really excited to have us there. There's a lot of fanfare surrounding the race. There's like a parade of nations and mm-hmm. the mayor comes out and does like a press conference with us. And, um, it really makes, they make, they make the athletes feel really special. Uh-huh. And it's, it's just a really unique race weekend because, you're doing three different race disciplines in one weekend, mm-hmm. which is just something that, um, okay. I mean, the only thing I can compare it to is like the conference meet, like conference track meets when you'd mm-hmm. run, I would run like the mile and the 5k, um, and you know, like a, a relay or something. And, um, I don't know, kind of just like reminds me of that, which is kind of more fun and yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, and so tell me about what you're training for in, um, right now, like what's yeah. the next big thing? So, um, a couple changes have happened with the Spartan season and they've introduced a 5k. So the, the distances have, have been, um, adapted slightly to kind of match like the running world. So mm-hmm. the sprint is now a 5k, the super is now a 10k and the beast is a half marathon. Okay. Uh, and they've decided to introduce a 5K sprint to the National Series races. Mm-hmm. And so that's actually the first race in Jacksonville is going to be a 5K sprint, which is significantly shorter than we've ever raced before, um, mm-hmm. at least at, like, one of the top most competitive races. Yeah. And, um, I think it's going to be really exciting. I'm, um, I'm hopeful that everybody will make their spear and it'll, like, keep everybody in the race close together and it'll be a really exciting finish. Um, but that's one thing that's like, I think people are kind of nervous about that any, any failed obstacle in a sprint will just be like a, a major kill to the, the mm-hmm. time. Cause like a, a one and a half or two minute penalty, if it's, if it's burpees, mm-hmm. uh, would significantly hinder you in a race that could potentially only be like a 25 minute race. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. what are the like areas that you feel like you need to work on to, um, I don't know, like, is it? carrying heavy loads or what are the things that you're going to be like focusing on in your training right now? Um, I would say that I always have to be working on my heavy carries. That's something Mm -hmm. that I've historically struggled with. And while I've gotten significantly better at it, the double carries in particular are still very, very taxing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like eight pounds at once is a lot. (laughs) Uh So, um, yeah, so that's something that I've, um, I'm going to be incorporating a little bit more strength into my training, both mm-hmm. for the, both to cater towards like being ready for the heavy carries, but also, um, just kind of like as injury prevention and trying to be a little bit stronger of a runner. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, I'm, I've just started kind of implementing like a different strength program that my, my friend Nell Rojas and my mm-hmm. PT have put together. So I'm excited for that. I think that it should, yeah. it should help with not only like my, my my running, um, like economy and my strength, but also just kind of, um, being a little bit more durable and, and like preventing injuries. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So kind of focusing on that. And then I actually have a few trail races that I'm going to be doing this year. And, um, some of them are a little bit different, like the, the 50 K that I mentioned, it's, um, it's a, pretty far for me. It's like yeah. twice the distance of, of my longest race ever. Uh-huh. Okay. So, um, so that's, that's different and new and it'll be, mm-hmm. it'll be exciting to train for something like that. Yeah. And then, um, the other one that I'm also going to be kind of like the other top trail race that I'm going to be doing is the mountain running championships, which this year are in Oregon. Oh, okay. Uh, and that's like a short mountain running race. It's like uh-huh. six miles. So okay. that'll be kind of different too. Yeah. And how has running been for you? Like, because you like, 
You liked going to um, the obstacle course racing because it wasn't just straight running and you were able to like avoid running injuries that way. So this will be um, all running, right? The trail yes. run that you're so talking the about? 50K, the mountain race, and then mm -hmm. also um, Broken Arrow, which is a race I did last year too, the 26K. Mm -hmm. Those will all be straight running. Um, so yes, a little bit different than what I've focused on in, in past years. Um, and it's something that when I first started obstacle course racing, I was still very much dealing with a hip injury, mm -hmm. which, um, which I still have limitations from now, but my pain and, um, and a lot of the, um, the problems that I was having yeah. have, have gotten better and better over the years. And so, um, so I'm like lucky that I'm like, I'm at a point now that, mm -hmm. that I don't have to have a, a race that's broken up by obstacles necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that my body can like handle the running. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, I, I feel pretty confident in being able to handle like an 18 or even like 30 mile race. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it'll be exciting. Wow. I think mm -hmm. just like kind of nice to throw something different in there. And yeah. well, I, I like, I love obstacle racing. It's like super fun and it uh -huh. kind of keeps me focused. I have like a little bit of a scattered brain sometimes and it's nice to have like something to focus on every like <laughs> half mile or so. Yeah. But it's also nice to kind of come back to like my roots, which is mm -hmm. just like you're running. So yeah. yeah. Well, how do you feel like um, you were able to strengthen yourself from those injuries? What What do you attribute to um, being the greatest cause of that? Um, I think I had a lot of um, <coughs> sorry. I had a um, some like poor motor motor patterns mm -hmm. that were going on. Um, and like a lack of mobility um, and then also just like a lack of like hip strength as well so it's kind of been like a combination of things working on my um, like my proprioception and my balance and um, one-legged strength and hip mobility and hip strength in general yeah there hasn't been like one thing that was like mm -hmm. oh yeah like that was it <laughs> right um, right and it's something like I, I have a labral tear in my hip mm -hmm. um, I actually have I have one on my left and I have two on my right. <laughs> yeah, right. And, um, and it's not atypical for runners to have mm -hmm. real labral chairs. It's actually very common. And okay. some people have surgery on them and some people are able to run without surgery. Some people have, have labral chairs and they, they don't even have any symptoms. So, uh -huh. um, yeah, so, so it's definitely not, not like alone in my, uh -huh. in my injury. Um, yeah. but my symptoms are a little bit atypical and so I have had to be a little bit creative with the things I do. Um, and one of those is just that I have to, I do have to avoid running on roads. Flat mm -hmm. roads is just mm -hmm. something that my body does not tolerate. And I don't, um, I don't quite know if it's the, the consistent terrain and like uh, when I have a consistent stride that aggravates mm -hmm. the tear or if it's when I run faster and I get into more extension in my stride, that's the issue. But whatever it is, that is just like kind of like an absolute no go for me, and I avoid it at all costs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's good. Good to know for somebody else who might be struggling, you know, with uh, running on roads to try trail running, or you know, mm -hmm. maybe try some other types of race like obstacle course racing. Um, yeah. So, um, what other tips do you have for people who are training? Maybe they're not elite athletes, but um, <coughs> trying to get healthier get fitter I'm sure you have lots of friends who like say oh I can never be like you or whatever but what do you what do you tell them to encourage them just to try something yeah you know um I think that one one way that I've had success in my training is that I I I, I kind of I pick out you know, the, the things that I need to do in order to accomplish my goals, which mm -hmm. for, for obstacle racing, you have to have, um, you have to focus on running, you have to focus on like, kind of like pure strength. And then also this element of like grip strength and, um, like obstacle specificity. Uh -huh. And, um, for me, like you can accomplish those in a variety of ways. And, and there are a lot of different ways to train for obstacle horse racing. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, I'm going to, I try to approach things in a way that um, I'm doing things that I really enjoy doing, that I really love to do, that kind of like inspire me mm -hmm. and are not hard to get motivated to do. Yeah. <laughs> Which I definitely, I have like the luxury of 
um, having this as my full-time job right now. So Mm -hmm. I can devote, you know, um, two hours to rock climbing four days a week, which Mm -hmm. some people can't do that on top of maybe wanting to run an hour or two, six or seven days a week, and then also needing to get into the gym like twice a week too. So Mm -hmm. there are, you know, to some extent, like you got to work within your time, time constraints, but if, um, the more that you can, the more things you can do that, um, that bring you joy and, mm-hmm. and don't feel as much like training, I think the better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 What do you like to do, um, to just re- relax and unwind and make sure you're not overexerting yourself and training all the time? <laughs> um, <laughs> that is something that I kind of struggle with. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and part of it is actually cause like I, you know, I, I enjoy, um, like I enjoy climbing and sometimes like that to me kind of is a little mm-hmm. bit more relaxing because it's mm-hmm. not, it's not like a, like a big, like cardiovascular effort at least. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but I kind of have to remind myself like, no, like even if I'm climbing easy for an hour or two, like that's still training <laughs> also. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, I try to go to relaxing yoga classes, mm-hmm. uh, which again, like yoga can still be, it's still, still somewhat of like a stressful, um, activity. And so, um, but especially if I can find like relaxing ones that are more like slow, like stretching poses, um, yeah. I incorporate those into, to my weeks and then, um, like short sauna sessions too, uh-huh. which can have both, um, benefits to training, but also I find that to be really relaxing, especially if I'm like alone in the sauna, it's like mm-hmm. it's very like peaceful and quiet. And, um, it's, yeah, that's kind of those. Yeah. And, um, I've heard that sweating is supposed to be really good for you. I don't <laughs> yeah. quite understand all the science around it, but yeah, <coughs> whether you're working out or just sweating in a sauna, it's supposed to have <laughs> health mm-hmm. benefits. So, yeah. Yeah. I have to, to, keep it in check in the summer because mm-hmm. you get kind of too sweaty if you're like running outside yeah. and then jumping in the sauna for too long. Right. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I just, I'm definitely working on, on like relaxing more and, um, whether that's just like reading time mm-hmm. or going on like an easy walk with my dog. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you do meditation? Or, I, mean, I, I know I'm putting you on the spot, yeah. but I'm sure yoga is a form of meditation too. So yeah, I think probably yoga is the closest, like, mm-hmm. the, that I've recently been, yeah, like, gotten to meditation. Um, and I do, like, I try to, like, focus on, um, like, my breath and yoga and mm. and kind of, um, like, you know, when you, any thoughts of, like, the day that's popping into your head, you kind of, like, try to let them go and just kind of mm-hmm. be in the moment. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but I haven't, yeah, I haven't tried meditation in a long time. Yeah. Um, did a little bit of meditation and visualization when I was in college mm-hmm. and it was something that was, was actually really beneficial. Mm-hmm. Uh, I probably should incorporate more of that now. Well, you, you've got a lot going on, so. <laughs> but I understand. I know we all could benefit from meditation. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like there's a, a particular mindset that helps you as you're trying to get through the races? Um, I would say most of my approaches approach to racing is um, kind of focused on trying to relax the first part mm-hmm. of a race, uh, and that's kind of the the things that like I, I will say like my inner inner dialogue is always um, about like being smooth and relaxing and whether that's like specific cues like okay like let your shoulders hang down lower mm-hmm. and like unclench my hands. Um, or if it's just kind of like a, a general feeling that, you know, like, oh, if I see somebody going out harder than me and, um, you know, not letting that make me anxious, like trusting kind of in, in my, um, my race plan and, and my, my ability to like sense where, um, my like effort level is mm-hmm. and where it should be, which is, which comes with racing. And I think it's something that, um, that I do have a good sense for. And so there was, there, like, there's a race, um, I forgot, I think it was the 15K in Europe where there was a couple girls who went out really hard mm-hmm. and I, and I was back in like fifth or sixth place and I ran up on one of my friends, Becca, and I, and I just, and I could tell like she, she was also, I think getting like maybe like a little bit anxious about like, oh, there's these girls ahead of us. And, mm-hmm. and I just, I was like, just, I was like, don't worry, 
we're in a really great place right now. Those girls mm-hmm. are going not too hard. Like they're going to come back. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of the same thing that like I'll say to myself. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, yeah. But so it's kind of funny. Like the, I feel like the most, most of the time, at least the first half of a race, I'm kind of focused on relaxing, which is mm-hmm. somewhat the opposite of what you would think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm really like, I don't need to like pump myself up a lot, I guess. Uh huh. Um, like the, like nerves and, and, um, like race jitters are always there mm-hmm. and that's, uh, like my body's yeah, kind of it, historically when I was like really young too, like I had a lot of, like I had a lot of, of nerves around racing. And mm-hmm. so I think I had to work on calming myself down before races mm-hmm. and then calming myself down at the start of a race as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So are there people who have influenced you, um, at points in your training that like kept you going, would you say, or have you just kind of had your own drive to keep trying, keep winning <laughs> or keep trying, keep competing. Yeah, I would say, uh, I definitely had a few points, especially in the first couple of years that I was racing in 2016 mm-hmm. and 17, where, um, there were, there were a lot of aspects of obstacle racing that I really enjoyed and I really loved. And I thought were like reasonably challenging, um, mm-hmm. activities, but then there were, there were certain races that the heavy carries just t- completely destroyed me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did, I really had to, um, I, I thought about quitting the sport for a while. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's definitely a couple of races that made me like really second guessing, like, oh, like, is this something that I want to do? Is this something that I think I can, can improve? Like, can I actually improve my heavy carry strength? And, um, and there, there were a lot of, a lot of women, a lot of, a lot of guys that were also kind of like more, um, had more experience in, in Spartan racing that were really encouraging. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of took me some time to figure out, um, how to adapt my training so that I actually could make improvements. Um, so yeah, I would say like there are a lot of people that were already established in the sport that really inspired me and, Mm -hmm. and being able to see that there are women that were like my same size. Um, it's not like, like I'm, I'm like five, three, um, like I'm not like, like super muscular, uh-huh. at least like I was when I started racing. Yeah. And, um, and, and part of it was, I just, I think I, I initially just thought like, Oh, I'm just, I'm just too small to do this, but to do mm-hmm. this, I'm just like, I'm never going to be able to carry 80 pounds because mm-hmm. that's like, that's like a big percentage of my body weight. And yeah. Um, but, but I, I looked at the girls around me and, and sure, like some of them were definitely taller and had like broader shoulder, just more, more body mass, to, like put the sandbags on. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're like, obviously like come from like a CrossFit background or like, uh, you know, incorporated more lifting into their training. Yeah. But then the other women were just like, are, were like exactly my size and uh-huh. they were, and they were excelling at the heavy carries. Uh-huh. And so I think I, I drew a lot of confidence from that, that like, mm-hmm. oh, well, like, like she looks like me and she can do it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so I think like, I just have to work harder. I just have to mm-hmm. figure out what I'm doing wrong in training and, mm-hmm. and that I'll be able to get there. Yeah. Right. Well, and going back earlier in your life, <laughs> I mean, what got you into OCR in the first place was overcoming a major setback in your running could you just kind of recap what happened there for a minute? Yeah. So I, um, like I grew up as a runner, been a runner my whole life. I went to Rice University on a running scholarship. Um, and I had some success there and I, after college, I had plans of running, um, competitively still. I trained with a group in Boulder, um, where I was planning to go back to the track and race the steeplechase again and hopefully make the Olympic trials again and kind of like try to try to pursue, con- continue pursuing running. Yeah. Um, but I had an injury to my hip and just completely derailed my training. I went through physical therapy for a year, nothing changed. And it was really frustrating. I saw um, two different surgeons. I saw a back specialist, a nerve specialist. I had a 3D gait analysis done. I, I kind of like checked off every like single thing that it could have could be and Mm -hmm. kind of just heard the same answer from doctors which was like everything looks pretty good we're not exactly sure why you're having this these symptoms like we know you have this labral tear but um but your symptoms are a little abnormal for Mm -hmm. 
for, um, for labral tear injuries. And, and, um, and the big kicker was that the surgeons that I saw, they, they didn't really advise surgery. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them was like, well, if you really want to do it, I'll do it. <laughs> and wow. I was like, well, that's yeah. not what you want to hear from your surgeon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and Nor so, do you want to hear that they can't really figure out what's wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all very frustrating. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, yeah, so I was, I was kind of in a um, very, like, questioning state. And I, I had put so much effort and so much time toward running that, um, and I had so much, like, passion for it still that I really wanted to do it. And so um, when, when I decided to stop running on the roads, it really felt like I was giving up. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, it, and it's, I mean, it's even kind of hard to, to still see it as, as not like somewhat of a failure, but it's something that like, I, I really had to like completely walk away from that in order to be able to run it all. Right. And, um, and I would never have found trail running, obstacle course racing had I, continue to just like be super stubborn and, and -hmm. like, you know, just continuing to like try to run on the roads and, um, you know, like maybe, maybe would have eventually had surgery. I don't know. And, and there's, there's not always, um, great results with labral cell surgery either. So Mm -hmm. even in, um, you know, in a case where a surgeon is like questioning (laughs) me Mm -hmm. having surgery, um, even, even if it was like the best case scenario where they really wanted to do surgery there, it's not always a great outcome. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that that um, that was really hard for me to to process, and just because I I kind of have always grown up thinking like you know if you work hard enough at something that you can overcome certain challenges and mm-hmm. and you'll like build your goal and 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 sometimes like you're just not able to. There's there's certain limitations, and um, I think being able to like adapt your goals. Um, right. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, um, yeah, I mean, the body's only so resilient and mm-hmm. my seems to be, it seems to be doing well right now, <laughs> but, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I, I don't have any doubt that if I was still trying to run on the roads, I would have been, um, in a similar situation. <laughs> yeah. Who do you feel like encouraged you to adapt your goals? Was it yourself or someone in your life at the time? Um, I think it was, uh, what it came down to was that I, I had, I still had the goals of competing at a high level. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, and I miss that competition. I just like, I really like competition. I think it's, um, not, not like, you know, necessarily to be like head to head with another person, but just mm-hmm. like, I like to challenge myself physically and right. um, other ways. And so I just miss, miss that, that aspect of running, mm-hmm. um, but even even like without <laughs> without that in the picture, like that was like kind of long gone. Um, I also I just missed being able to run. Period. <laughs> mm-hmm. And um, and I was at a point where I just like I really couldn't even run for for just like the joy of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so that's when I like sat down and I made a list of everything that I thought would make my hip feel better and everything that made it feel worse. And I just made a a decision that I would commit to only doing the things that made it feel better. And, mm-hmm. um, and I continued to try to see different doctors and, um, and find, um, yeah, like, like try different, different PTs and chiropractors that could help me, um, with like mobility and strength work and everything. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It was kind of just like this, like desire to get back to even being able to run for the joy of it. Yeah. Well, that's so great. You stayed the course and you were able to find something else that you love. And the, and now you're back to what you first loved. Like you said, <laughs> more running competitions and stuff. So, and yeah. you said you're going to go climbing. I, I need to let you go. Yeah. Is that what you said? You're off oh, to yeah, climbing today. Certainly, yeah. <laughs> I will do some climbing today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, anything else that you'd like to um, share with our listeners about staying in the game? Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I just think that it's it's important to um, to kind of be, um, you know, <laughs> it's. I know this can be a hard concept to mm-hmm. um, to accept, but sometimes you have to be kind of gracious with your body's limitations. Mm-hmm. 
And I think that um, as athletes, especially, you know, we, we expect a lot from our bodies. Um, and it's just, you know, like there's, there's power to rest and there's power to, to, to altering training and altering your goals. Um, and you can still reach like, like similar goals or, um, or a high level if you are a little bit more gracious with that, mm-hmm. with your right. body. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know, I think it's really important for people to not give up and to, you know, adapt, like you were saying earlier, and to find what works for them and works for their body and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Just real quick, do you have any like special routines that you um, adhere to outside of your strength and your endurance training? Do you have any nutrition habits or um, any, any other health practices that you feel have helped you? Um, yeah, with my nutrition, I kind of have the philosophy that I, I try to eat, try to eat well, I try to eat whole foods, Mm -hmm. I try to, um, get everything I can just from, just from like quality ingredients, Mm -hmm. um, and limit like processed foods and, um, and additives. Um, but I still have a sweet tooth and I, I still think it's important to, uh, to like allow yourself to, to kind of like you know, indulge in desserts and, uh, and yummy tasting things and, Uh um, and eat until fullness whenever, um, Mm -hmm. no matter what, even, even when you're, when you're injured, it's really important to Mm -hmm. to feel that's like, it's even more important sometimes. And, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I don't, I don't have like a, a very strict practice when it comes to my nutrition. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think that's kind of important and kind of to success. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So a little bit of moderation there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Well, we're excited for your year. It's a brand new (laughs) year. You've got a lot of things coming down the pipeline and what's the best way for people to follow you and what you're doing? Um, I mainly post on my Instagram and Mm -hmm. that's, um, Nicole and I C K E L D M. Um, and I, and I have a Facebook as well that it's connected to, I think. (laughs) All right. That's that's the best way. Um, Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Well, we'll direct people to go check you out on Instagram and cheer you on on some of your competitions and your training. And they can find out more about what you're doing to stay fit and stay active. And Mm -hmm. um, I like your posts. Um, So we'll, we'll go ahead and do that with show notes. And we sure appreciate your time. Well, thank you so much. It was great talking to you. Yeah, and you have a great day and have fun on your climb tonight. Thanks. <laughs> okay, thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye. To learn more from Nicole Miracle, be sure to visit us at plumdragonherbs.com. We will post show notes, a transcript, and ways to connect with Nicole. And if you liked what you heard today, we hope you'll send us some love back by subscribing to our show on YouTube, iTunes, or wherever you like to listen. Be sure to leave us a comment and let us know what you think. Until next time.